Hey there everyone, it's Mr. Lane here to bring you a lecture on art from late medieval Italy. This period is also known as the Middle Ages or Dark Ages. Late medieval Italy key ideas. The time period is between medieval and the high renaissance. This would have been between the years 1200 to 1400. Artists received more recognition and become important historical figures. They had artist guilds, which were associations of master craftsmen, apprentices, and tradespeople. These artists had commissions and contracts during this time. There were three important ideals. Humanism, in which the concern is with reason and distinct from religion. Secularism and individualism. Artists also focused on the natural world. For instance, Giotto launched the Italian Renaissance by painting people who appeared three-dimensional rather than flat. So there was a more naturalistic approach to representing based on observation. The new intellectual ideals were human experience, manners, and politics. Here's a list of the key terms. Here's a list of all the required artworks we will be discussing. This is a map of Italy around 1400. The art from this period was concerned with the revival of the classical tradition, referring to Greco-Roman art and architecture. The geography of the republics of Siena and Florence, which you can see here circled in red, were two of the most powerful city-states. A city-state is an independent city and sometimes its surrounding land which has its own government completely separate from nearby countries. In fact, well-known cities such as Rome and Athens were city-states and the entire country of Italy was made up of independent merchant city-states during the Renaissance. Florence and Siena are extremely competitive. They're just 30 miles apart. And most people believe that the Renaissance probably began in Florence. Petrarch, an Italian poet and scholar of the 14th century, famously referred to the period of time between the fall of the Roman Empire, 476, and his own day, 1330s, as the Dark Ages. Petrarch believed that the Dark Ages was a period of intellectual darkness due to the loss of the classical learning, which he saw as light. Later historians picked up on this idea and ultimately the term Dark Ages was transformed into Middle Ages. Humanism is a code of civil conduct that focuses on values, morals, and education. It is distinct from religious views and also concerned with, with the revival of Greek knowledge that had been lost, referring to the classical period. It was also a model for living based on reason. The Black Death was an epidemic that started in the 1340s and claimed 75 million lives. It wiped out 25 to 50 percent of Europe in five years and also wiped out 50 to 60 percent of Italy. It's also known as the bubonic plague. It's a disease caused by the bacteria that circulates among wild rodents where they live in a great number and density. This plague among humans arises when rodents in human habitation, habitation normally black rats, become infected. The black rat also called the house rat and the ship rat, likes to live close to people, the very quality that makes it dangerous. The first artist we will talk about is from Florence. Our first art piece is a tempera painting 
using gold leaf on wood made by Chimabue, titled Madonna and Throne with Angels and Prophets, located in Florence. It was made between 1280 to 1290. Some of the babies you will see in our lecture today do not look exactly like babies. Here's a video you may find funny titled, Why Babies in Medieval Paintings Look Like Ugly Old Men. In this painting, Chimabui challenged major conventions of late medieval art in pursuit of the natural world. Look at the draperies, for example. They are more 3D and enhanced. There is also a use of deeper space for figures to inhabit. We can see overlapping of bodies and cropping. Chimaboy was one of the first artists to break the Italo-Byzantine style, which consisted of primarily flat and non-realistic type of paintings. The painting we see here is very large because it needed to be seen from the back of the church and would have been in the altar. The dominant color is gold, which would represent the light of heaven. This scene can be described as the cult of the Madonna or the Virgin. People would pray to the Virgin Mary and maybe she would speak to God on their behalf. These are Old Testament prophets holding scrolls. They predict the coming of Christ. At the top we see Mary and the Christ child. In the middle are the angels. In the bottom are the prophets. Here's another Madonna and Throne painting done by Giotto. This piece marks the end of the medieval painting style in Italy and the beginning of a new naturalistic approach. If you look at the figures and their drapery, we can see more modeling. It's also a large scale panel that stands on its own and free from the wall. Usually it was done using fresco or the use of tempera. Here we use tempera. Giotto moved away from the traditional use of painting and towards reality that anchored figures to the ground lines. Here is a comparison of the painting by Giotto on the left and Chimabui on the right. Giotto was actually a student of Chimabui. However, the source of Giotto's style is still debated. Moving on to paintings done in the city of Siena. Duccio, Virgin and Child Enthroned with Saints. The Maesta is Italian for majesty. It's a short name used to describe a representation of the Madonna and Child in which the Madonna is enthroned in majesty as Queen of Heaven, surrounded by a court of saints and angels, like you see here. The city of Siena believed the Virgin had brought them victory over the Florentines at battle. Saint Ansanus came from a noble family. He was betrayed by his father for preaching the gospel and then thrown into a vat of boiling oil before being beheaded. Saint John the Baptist is known by his unkempt appearance. He wanders the desert and is usually represented with a lamb. He also has a status as the forerunner of Christ. Saint Agnes was a Roman virgin who refused the advances of an official. At the, at the age of 13, she was thrown into a brothel. This is Dutro, The Life of Jesus, 14 panels from the back of the Maesta altarpiece. We will focus on one of the paintings.
Several episodes of the event Betrayal of Jesus is represented in this painting. Judas has already been paid pieces of silver by Roman authorities to identify Christ with a kiss. Here are Christ's followers fleeing. Peter comes to rescue Christ. Here's a side by comparison of the Madonna and the throne done by Duccio, Giotto, and Cimabue. Here is Giotto's Arena Chapel, located in Italy and was made between 1305 and 1306. We're going to look at one painting within this chapel. During the Lamentation, Christ has been crucified. And as you can see here, he's been taken down off the cross and is being mourned by his mother and followers. Five key components of this painting include a narrative setting, 3D figures, the placement of figures, value, and perspective. The Mother Mary has raised her right knee and she is supporting Christ with her arms. Foreshortening is used to create, help create an illusion of space. The placement of figures and objects help to direct the viewer's eyes to the focal point. Mary Magdalene is also located in this painting, who in the Bible context had anointed Christ's feet. Some of the figures have their back turned towards the viewer, helping to create more of a sense of intimacy and realism. There is individuality shown by the different expressions of grief. This painting is a fresco. Fresco is Italian for fresh. It is a mural painting technique involving the application of permanent lime proof pigments diluted in water on freshly laid lime plaster. Because the surface of the wall absorbs the pigments as the plaster dries, fresco is one of the most durable painting techniques. Born fresco or true fresco this process is time consuming and demanding and requires several layers of plaster. Now we will look at painting in Siena from C1280-1350 and the formation of the international Gothic style. Characteristics of the Sienese or international Gothic style include more decorative style, which is more reminiscent of Northern European art. The figures are thinner, elegant, and courtly. Courtly is referred to as polite or refined. The drapery is less defined and is more flowing like ripples. It imitates marble patterning on thrones or pavements. Figures are more in proportion to each other versus hierarchical ordering. We're also going to see Italian altar pieces that reflect Gothic cathedrals. We are not sure which artist painted which part. They believe that Simone Martini painted the central area, and then Lippo Mimi painted the two figures on either side. This is uh, the Annunciation, which is in which Gabriel, the angel, is announcing to Mary that she will be the mother of the Christ child. Simone Martini was also a student of Duccio. This section shows a detail of decorative pattern and subtle color.
The figures located in the circles above the main characters include Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Daniel. The text we see, the angel Gabriel speaking towards Mary, says, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. The vase of lilies are symbols of Mary's virginity. The olive leaves is a symbol of the coming of Christ as well as a story of Noah in which a dove returns with an olive branch speaking towards the covenant God made with mankind. We see the Holy Spirit descending in the form of a dove. The other two characters on the left side will be Saint Ansanus III, who was the patron saint of Siena. And then we have Saint Margaret, which we're unsure of her story. Thanks for watching, everyone. Here is a recap of everything that we've learned so far.